to our service and morning worship here at St. Thomas's for the third Sunday of Epiphany. And we're continuing to think about God revealing himself in Jesus Christ. Next Sunday we're marking as Candlemas and so it will, that service will actually be a celebration of the Holy Communion. At home you may wish to have a lit candle because Candlemas brings together, it brings to a close our celebration of Christmas one point in the service, towards the end of the service, we shall all blow our candles out and you may wish to join in doing that. So now's the time to look out that candle that you had left over from Christmas. Well, not now, but in due course. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you also with you. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let's now pause, call to mind our sins, and seek God's forgiveness. Illuminate the darkness in our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, open our eyes to your saving love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, and stop our ears to your living word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God forgives all who truly, truly repent. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, we praise God in the words of the glory of the next Chelsea. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We hear our Old Testament reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. After his return from the defeat of Kedor Laoma and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shaveh, that is, the king's valley. 
and King Melchizedek of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham, thy God Most High, maker of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abraham gave him one tenth of everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Now we come to our psalm, which is from Psalm 128. The response is, How abundant is your goodness, O Lord? And so you know when to say it. When we get to that point, I'll just bow my head like that so you know to say then how abundant is your goodness O Lord blessed are all those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways you shall eat the fruit of the toil of your hands it shall go well with you and happy shall you be how abundant is your goodness O Lord your wife within your house shall be like a fruitful vine, your children round your table like fresh olive branches. Thus shall the one be blessed who fears the Lord. How abundant is your goodness, O Lord! The Lord from out of Zion bless you, that you may see Jerusalem in prosperity all the days of your life. May you see your children's children, and may there be peace upon Israel. How abundant is your goodness, O Lord. Say together, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We remain standing for our gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, <coughs> Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. <coughs> Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory. And his disciples believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
May the words of my lips, the thoughts of all our hearts, be now and forever acceptable in your sight. Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. That story of the wedding at Cana in Galilee is in many ways slightly odd. Or in some ways slightly odd. It somehow seems rather trivial. Some biblical scholars have had a great problem. Why should Jesus make such a fuss about preserving a party? Making a party go with a swing. And indeed some people say, this, oh well this never actually happened, this was just a parable Jesus told. <clears throat> and then people misunderstood and misremembered and thought it was actually uh, it was actually a miracle. But that story of Cana in Galilee has been an important part of the season of Epiphany. An important part of the revealing of God in Christ since very early times. In fact, there's an ancient introduction to the Feast of the Epiphany, which goes, Three wonders mark this holy day as the church is joined to her heavenly bridegroom. This day a star leads the wise men to the manger. Alleluia. This day water is made wine at the wedding feast. Alleluia. This day, Jesus is revealed as the Christ in the waters of baptism. Alleluia. So far from being trivial, actually this miracle at Cana in Galilee was obviously thought of as being tremendously important. A vital part of the revealing of God in Jesus. It is such a vital part. What does it actually reveal? What does the miracle show? First and most obviously, of course, it reveals Jesus as a miracle worker. It's one of it says in the text, one of the the first sign that he met did. After seeing the changing of the water into wine, Jesus' disciples wouldn't regard him in the same way anymore. Wouldn't hear his words in the same way. This is clearly someone very special. But I think we shouldn't put too much stress on that idea of Jesus' first miracle being a sign of the specialness. After all, in four or five weeks' time, we'll be at the beginning of Lent. And we'll hear the story of the temptations. And at least one of the understandings of the temptations is Jesus rejecting miracle working as a route to celebrity, rejecting the idea that he does wonders, does wonders so that people take notice of it. So it seems a bit odd that at Cana in Galilee he might do exactly that. Well, how else could it be a revealing of God in Jesus? The wedding feast is a biblical image of the day of the Lord, the coming of the kingdom of God. They often speak of it in terms of a wedding. Jesus, think how many of Jesus' parables refer to people being ready for a wedding. You know, the little girls who don't have enough oil for their lamps, or the bridegroom coming and everybody getting ready for him. So, 
the miracle and the story around it isn't just about saving a newly married couple and their family from embarrassment. It also says something about the kingdom of God, the day of the Lord. It's about the extravagant generosity of God, the overwhelming generosity that he shows to all of us. Our eldest son, Tim, as a somewhat bored older child in church, an older child with a penchant for maths, sat down and during this sermon, or the sermon on this subject, many years ago, worked out a quantity of wine. It was a good news Bible, it gives you it in litres, which makes life a lot simpler. You realise the wedding at Cain in Galilee turns out of 800 bottles of wine. 800 bottles? That made for quite a party. But it's not just about how much wine, it's about a ridiculous generosity. God wants to give us so much. And that message finds an echo in another famous miracle. Think of the feeding of the 5,000, where Jesus takes five barley loaves and two fish and uses them not just to feed 5,000 people, but to have 12 basketfuls of scraps left over. It's ridiculous over catering because God is, so, is prepared to give us so much more than we could possibly need, so much more than we ask. He loves us so much more than we deserve, so much more than we can imagine. And perhaps that may be one of the most important signs be detected, to be detected in this wedding of Cana. But the miracle also speaks of Jesus as a fulfilment of prophecy. Those stone water jars represent the ritual washing required by the Jewish law. Ritual practices the Jews observed while waiting for the fulfilment of God's purposes, the coming of his kingdom. And then the wine. Well, in the prophecy of Isaiah, the Messiah who comes to bring redemption is described as being robed in purple, like one who has trodden the wine. So the turning of water into wine says, you've been keeping the faith, keeping the law all this time. Now the Messiah is here. The law is fulfilled. God's promise is fulfilled. And of course we as Christians also see that wine as a pointer to Christ's self-giving. The giving of itself to us and for us, which we revisit every time we celebrate Holy Communion. So for Jew and Christian alike, changing water into wine is a sign of the fulfilling of God's promise, a sign of his Messiah. It's also been pointed out this miracle says something about who Jesus is. It reveals Jesus not just as a wonder worker, but as God himself. It reveals him as one with the God of nature and harvest. 
the God who makes rain fall, water irrigate the crops, makes the vine and the grapes grow to give us wine. In this miracle, we see that natural process speeded up, which Jesus can do because he is both God with us and God in nature. So, this rather curious and seemingly trivial miracle, it's not trivial at all. It points to the essential meaning of epiphany. The essential meaning of the coming of God into the world, the revealing of God in Jesus Christ. Changing of the water into wine reveals Christ as a promised Messiah to whom Jewish religion is pointing. It reveals him as one and the same God, as the God who created the heavens and the earth, but also one who comes into the world that we may share his life. The life that's represented by the bread and wine given to us. Remember, he said, this wine is my blood. For a Jew of Jesus' time, the blood represents the life force, the essence of life. So, <clears throat> as we share the wine, we share Christ's life. More than that, this miracle speaks of the extravagantly generous love of God for all humanity, undeserving as we are. A love that passes all understanding. And yet, at the same time as all these wonderful and high-flown theological ideas. The miracle of Cana in Galilee also speaks of a God who doesn't want to see a wedding spoiled and a family shamed because the wine has run out. A God who cares about things in life matter to us, but on the great scheme of things, might not seem that important. He still cares. Amen. Now we affirm our faith in the God who is generous to us, the God who gives himself for us, the God who cares for us in every aspect of our lives, both small and great. Do you believe in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe and trust in him. 
Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe in one God, in one God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. union with Christ and in the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father. particularly at this time of the Incarnation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, this time a prayer for Christian unity. We thank you for your church here on earth. The many denominations that give together glimpses of your wonder and your glory, your hope and your joy. May they keep the unity of your Holy Spirit in the bond of peace and be your shining light of hope in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks, Lord, for the fact that you are acting here and now in the world and that you care. In particular, this time, we thank you for the selfless actions of so many, in particular key workers, those working on the front line in the NHS, the scientists working hard to develop vaccines and medicines to combat the COVID-19. Guide and protect them in all they do. And your healing may be brought to your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Father, at this time of great uncertainty and fear, we pray for those who are finding it so difficult, being separated from family and friends, physically, who feel isolated, who fear for the future. May they know your care, your abundant love, your presence with them of Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Following our weekly prayer diary, we include in our prayers and ask your blessing upon those who live and work in Boston Road, Clitheroe Road and Warley Place. all the decisions and responsibilities it has 
we ask your guidance and blessing on our parochial church council. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. And we bring before you, Lord, those on our hearts and those who we're going to name before you, who we know are sick in need of our prayers. You know them, Lord, you know their needs. And we bring before you Eileen Bettridge, Janet Biancini, Julie Boker, Nicola Cunningham, Fran Davis, Francis Dugdale, Judith Eastwood, Marion Fielding, Jessie Pitt, Gloria and John Gibson, Jane Greenlodge, Martin Greer, John Hare, Anne Hewlett, Shirley Jackson, Eileen McGuckin, John McGuckin, June Medicott, Hilary Myers, Sylvia Nicholas, Heather Pascoe, Anthony Rayner, Pat Rayner, Catherine Roberts, Roy Simpson, June Thompson, Harry, Sarah, Baby Izzy, and all the staff and children at St. Thomas Nursery. May they know your healing and loving care at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our oh. prayer. Do we think, Lord, and pray for those who've died? May they rest in your peace. Particularly, we pray for Jill Burbage and Jean Carrington. We ask your comfort, your peace for all those who grieve for them at this time. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Bring our prayers together in the collect, the prayer for today. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> we join our prayers with the prayers of our Lord. As we say, the prayers he himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Prince of Peace, of 
the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory, and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you, now and forever.